So on the 17th of August, I found him um, not breathing. He had a little bit of blood coming out of his nose and I was obviously terrified. Um, and I tried to resuscitate him and I remember the ambulance people coming and I was praying. It was just myself and Christian in the ambulance and then we got to the uh, hospital and um, I was still with Christian and they were trying to um, resuscitate him and, and it was amazing in terms of the number of people that suddenly were just appeared from nowhere who were trying to um, save him and I don't think at all I realised the gravity of the situation that anything would really happen to him it was just it felt like a dream then the doctor came in and said basically um, he stopped breathing and we can't revive him and the toxicity levels in his body are rising and there's not really anything we can do about it and his organs are starting to shut down and then he went away and I couldn't quite believe it and then he came back and said um, no but we've got a heartbeat back now and I thought oh he's going to be okay um, I, knew, I knew it I knew there was no way that this could happen but then he explained to us that basically Christian's organs were shutting down and even though they had a heartbeat back that basically he was sort of um, you know, it was just, it would be basically be in a coma. They said that they would have to, um, that, you know, that Christian was, was going. And so we held Christian in his arms, not many people know this, but we held him in our arms um, and he slowly passed away. Um, there was a post-mortem and the, we were liaising with the coroner's office, which I think, again, is um, just something that you never expect to do for your own child. And then they explained that they did various tests on Christian's heart and his lungs and checked to see whether he had a virus and that, that basically there was nothing wrong with him that they could find. And that's why he was, um, that's why it was eventually concluded that um, he passed away from SIDS. When I take a call, it's really hard to know what's going to come from that parent or that family member that's on the other line. But usually there's a lot of pain, I'm hearing lots of tears, I'm hearing a lot of sorries and I just reassure the parent that it's okay, there's no apology needed and that we are here for them. Often they will say, towards the end of the call, I feel so much better, it's been really great talking to you, I was really nervous about making this phone call but I'm glad I did. Sometimes you can hardly hear a word they're saying because they are literally just sobbing. But throughout the call it's about us just taking our time with them me being patient with them and just listening through and just being there, you know, just in the moment of that phone call. Reaching out for help after the death of your baby or toddler, we realise is not an easy thing to do. Picking up the phone may be really hard. So you can contact us by social media or by email and we will respond as soon as possible. Our helpline is not just for parents, for grandparents, aunts and uncles and siblings. Whether the bereavement was recently or many years ago. We're here to help and support for as long or as little as you need it. I think the Lullaby Trust is an amazing place for people who've been touched by a child passing away from SIDS to come together to support each other, to know that they aren't the only ones who have experienced something like this and also as somewhere to remember your child. I feel that the Lullaby Trust is a place where I can remember Christian and one of my concerns or fears is that he will get forgotten um, and I will always remember him, but particularly on his birthday or his death anniversary or the times where, uh, you know, the days that are always harder than the other days, I know that there are other people out there who also care um, that, and remember my, my baby boy.